Hello and welcome to a new video on Apex Predator and Fast Fourier Transforms. I'm your host, Trader Zeta, and hopefully you're doing very, very well. First things first, this is not financial advice. Past results do not necessarily indicate future results. And now onto the video. Uh, for about uh, a few years now, I've been really working on this algorithm uh, called Apex Predator. And the underlying theme and idea of a lot of this is to use neural networks um, particularly equistate neural network, uh, various things like that, to predict uh, returns, right? To predict things like the average of returns, the volatility of returns, uh, that kind of stuff, and then throw it into some type of stochastic model. So traditionally I was working with uh, geometric Brownian motion, and then I decided to venture out into fractional Brownian motion uh, for, you know, various Hurst values or whatever. Um, but Really, I mean, uh, I thought like to myself, hey, look, a lot of the uh, Apex Predator stuff is really neural network heavy, and uh, I like that. I mean, that's pretty cool, but what if, you know, I were to just use something like a fast Fourier transform, right? So instead of trying to predict returns with neural networks, um, you know, I can just do the fast Fourier transform on the returns themselves, get a prediction for the fast Fourier transform, uh, for the returns, calculate the, the average of returns, calculate volatility, and then uh, you see how that goes. I mean, that's that would be pretty cool. So this is uh, that attempt right here, right? So what we can do, uh, I can show you um, the optimization is actually not that much. I mean, it's just you know less than a well, you know 50 values actually. Um, you know, I only really, really op optimized a little bit. So forward, um, the out of sample result was that the sharp ratio is around 38.53. Which you know I think is pretty cool. Um, you know, did definitely buy, was heavily biased on Wednesday, and uh, February there. But I mean, you know, that's that's pretty good. I mean, uh, I, I like uh, I like that number right there. Uh, the back test was also uh, pretty strong. I mean, uh, the sharp ratio was around forty eight point six three. So I mean, these these all kind of follow conventions as to you know how things would kind of you know I, I think realistically go. Uh, so let's go over the uh, inputs, right? So um, I can show the graph one more time, and then we can show the inputs. So I'm doing this on the five minute time frame. Uh, this is uh, US Cash uh, 100. Um, here, uh, or you know, NAS, um, here I've done a depth of 28 returns. Okay, so taking the last 28 returns, uh, I'm doing a four year of two to the power of six. So the fast for you transform um, will take two to the six values. The reason it's to the power of two uh, is because for uh, the fast for you transform in computer science, we use two key and Cooley's algorithm. Uh, we, I have an implementation of that here, and uh, it, ha it usually has to be a power of two. I mean, it's better if it's a power of two, okay? And here's the threshold, which is going to be one, right? And then we have uh, the Hurst value. Uh, the low Hurst value is 0.49. The high Hurst value is 0.51. And we have Brownian motion. So we're going to be trying to look for Hurst values between uh, 0.49 and 0.51. Okay. Now there are two Hurst calculations, one on a higher time frame and one on a lower time frame for your top-down analysis. That's like self-similarity in math speak. Um, we also have number of ticks is two. Uh, we might ask why like two ticks uh, a second. Um, well, because on the NAS things move very, very fast. And so we want to uh, get a really good approximation of, you know, how many ticks uh, a second there are, right? Especially when we do the, the geometric Brownian motion calculation. So these are stop losses and take profits. This is our control. We're doing this 10 to 14. Um, let's see, this is, we're not doing a transform. We can transform the predicted, uh, so the value, the, the return values to a different, you know, kind of setting for the four year transform, but we haven't really done that here. I don't think it's super necessary yet. Um, the Hurst depth is two to the power of six. Okay, so, you know, this is again, you know, pretty, uh, pretty good. And then we have for the geometric Brownian motion, 100,000 samples. Okay, so I'm gonna go over some of the code. Um, here we go, go all the way up here. All right, so uh, here is the uh, fast Fourier transform, right? So this is the library that I wrote uh, some time ago. It's actually really, you know, a couple years back on my channel. Um, fast Fourier transform is just Tukey and Cooley 
traditional stuff. Um, we need uh, the position info, trade class, normal distribution. Um, it's gonna be for the geometric routing motion. Here are all the inputs. I think we kind of more or less went over that. We instantiate some classes. Um, what we're going to do for the Hearst calculation is use I price, where I price is the close plus the open divided by two. And so we have a whole bunch of these sums for um, the Hearst calculation, right? Because the Hearst calculation is going to use this uh, least squares algorithm, and we really, really need the Hearst. Okay, so here is the transform stuff. That's not super necessary. This is my um, implementation of geometric Brownian motion. Um, obviously, it does not have uh, Hurst calculations. This is not fractional geometric Brownian motion. It's just regular geometric Brownian motion. That's why we're really hunting for values between uh, you know 0.49 and 0.51. Okay. So uh, this is mu, right? This is the average of returns. So we're just going to do uh, you know like you know log returns on there. This is volatility. We have, um, you know, the calculate log returns. So you do the log returns, you square them, you do the whole nice little standard deviation calculation there. This is the prediction. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to take um, uh, an array of returns, and then they be complex. In order for the fast Fourier transform to work really well, we have to do with like complex uh, variables here. So I created a complex class, right? This uh, this is a custom class that I wrote. Um, it's also a necessary thing for the fast Fourier transform as well. Um, yeah, but it's it's very very nice class. Um, we're going to resize the array. We're going to loop through, load up some returns. We're going to do the fast Fourier transform. We're going to calculate everything, and then what we're going to do is extrapolation. We're going to predict, uh, not predict, but we're going to go into the you know the periodic cycle and get the next uh, predicted return. And uh, then we're going to calculate what? The uh, mu and the new volatility uh, based on this new return, right? So now once we have our predicted uh, volatility and our predicted uh, average of returns, we can just multiply them by 100, throw them into the geometric Brownian motion, do our Monte Carlo simulation, and uh, we're in a good place. I, I like that, okay? So again, some trade magic. This is just some uh, code for uh, you know keeping track of you know. Let me put it this way: so we only really predict out to you know uh, how long the uh, geometric Brownian motion is going to last. So if we have like five minutes, we're only going to go into the next five minutes. So with that prediction, we uh, we can't go past that time, right? So the idea is to basically just close the trade if it is you know open longer than a, than the the time frame, right? So if we predict five minutes in the future and it tries to stay open until six minutes, it won't do it. It'll cut it out at five. Okay. And here's all the time controls. And here's the Hurst calculations. This is for the current time frame, and this is for the uh, the day. Okay. We get the current price. Now. What we'd like to do is uh, calculate the DX. So the DX is the current price, uh, the absolute value of the current price minus the predicted price, okay? And uh, this is just here, um, you know, this is the DX, right? Here is the Brownian motion, so this is a selector for the different types of noise that we can go through, right? Okay, and then this is obviously just, you know, uh, programmatic stuff for, you know, Okay, so if the DX is greater than the threshold, the pred price is greater than current price. Okay, we're good. Same, uh, just you know, similarly, uh, DX is greater than threshold, pred price is less than the current price. Uh, we take a sell. Okay, really, really cool. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, this is a lot of fun. I find this one to be a lot faster, uh, and this one to be a lot less cumbersome to code uh, compared to Echo State neural networks and all that other kind of stuff. So. Uh, have a great day, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.